I've got a few tutorials that I'm just going to put in one video of the stuff, some of the stuff I've made. But I So anyway, I was making these butterfly stick pins. They are so fun, you guys, and so easy. And um, I got this, like, bead, this little bead thing. And I was using these to make the butterflies in the video, so I'm just going to do that. Because I'm some of the orders on Etsy, I'm giving these butterflies away as freebies. So I'm going to make one for you guys. I'm actually going to make two. I'm going to make one out of the big lace. And uh, the rest of my lace is sold on my Etsy that um, was this kind of lace. So you can make these butterflies out of anything. You can make it out of ribbon, lace, trim, anything. So you just cut, I'm going to cut that at an angle, like that, and I'm going to cut this side at an angle. And this trim actually has where you can do that, so it makes it easier, but you can, you can just make your own angle. Boo, let Bubba in. And then see when you turn it, it's got that butterfly look to it. So then I just take one of my stick pins and I put a bead on it. And then I go down through the center and I just go back and forth. And push it down. And scrunch it up. And then put another bead on. lace out of the way. Some hot glue on or whatever glue you like to use. I like to use hot glue because it's fast. And then you can say you can leave it as a stick pin like that, or you can clip it off. And now I'll make a big one with this big lace. And I'm just going to cut this one straight down the middle. But I'm not going to cut up at this. I'm going to leave this. Obviously that holds it together. And this is a very big butterfly. And I love butterflies, guys, so... So if I can make a butterfly out of something, I will. And then you would just add a bead here, and then you've got a really big, pretty butterfly. That one's Hugungus. And I'll make a quick one out of just plain ribbon.
And this would be cool to layer with some tulle. All of them would be cool to do that. And then you could um, either cut it like this, like a V, to get the the wings, like that. Obviously, I'm just going fast, so it's not going to be very pretty. Just giving you the idea. So you can make a little butterfly out of just a teeny piece of ribbon. Okay, so there's the butterfly. Okay, so here's another two. This is, I'm going to show you uh, what I did with the UT, the perfect pearls. Actually, Pearl X. I don't have perfect pearls. I have Pearl X only. So if I say perfect pearls, I mean Pearl X. Anyway, here's this glue dot. This is the glue that I, um, it just went straight from my gun onto the mat and it just comes right up. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Christina. Okay, so I had to go on my oil painting stash and get my black gesso out, which when I go to paint a landscape or an abstract, I'm gonna be upset that I use this, but um, next time I go to the store, I need to get a cheap um, black gesso and save this for my oil paintings. Um, so anyway, I am going to show you what I did. So, darn it, hang on. Okay, so that's what I used on this chipboard. This is just a piece of chipboard. So I, paint, I painted it with black gesso, and I'm going to dry it up a little bit with my heat gun. Make sure it's dry. Okay, so I'm going to use the Stampendous uh, Clear Embossing Ink. It's Boss Gloss. And I have a link on one of my videos um, where you can get this online. And you guys, I've had this since I started scrapbooking. And it's still three quarters full. It lasts forever. And I have squeezed the you-know-what out of it. <laughs> I mean, it is... It's all squeezed up. But it still works. I love that stuff. When you don't need, you know, when it's just for UT, that's what I use it for. I don't use it for anything else, though. So I'm going to put my embossing ink on my chipboard and get it covered real good. I'm going to put my UT on it, and that's ultra thick embossing enamel, which I think you can find at all scrapbook stores. Now I'm going to heat it and when you heat so that it so so your UT doesn't blow away, make sure it's hot enough before you even get it close to it. And then just just start to put the heat gun close to it until you see it start to melt and then move it slowly over it so that it melts it before it gets to it. So it doesn't blow it all away. you can do a couple of layers depending on how thick you want your impression. The stamps that I use, my cling stamps, are Inka Dinka Doo. And that's, um, the, the brands that I've bought are Inka Dinka Doo. The other brands that I have are something that was given to me and, and I'm not gonna try that on, try this on gifts. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the other side. I know it probably takes longer doing it this way, but I should have just done the whole thing at once. I don't know. I just do it like this. I don't know why. <laughs> I just do it. Okay. 
to just go over the whole thing and try to get it to flat and level before you add your pearl wax or perfect pearls or mica powders, whatever you use. Okay, so there's just one layer of UT on it. So now, get your Perfect Pearls ready if you want to use that, otherwise you don't have to. Use whatever you want. And I got my Perfect Medium. And I'm just going to spread it all over the surface. Make sure it's cool before you do that. Okay. And then I use a paintbrush. And I just kind of put it on here sporadically. I'm doing a tutorial. And then take a big brush or a cleaner brush and just buff it in. Now get your stamp ready that you're going to use, and if you don't want to ruin a stamp or whatever, just use like a rubber stamp. Uh, Metallics ink. That way it will have the cloisonne look. Okay, so now it's all inked up and ready, and this is a hummingbird. This came with my butterfly that I used that stamp set. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to heat this up real good. Good. Okay. Now stamp it. Isn't that so beautiful? So you can leave it just like this, which is gorgeous. Or you can heat it more and melt it into the surface and flatten it out a bit. So wouldn't that make a really pretty tag or mat 